Okay, in my last video, I showed how to go about doing a digital wax up using the Blue Sky Bio uh, Crown and Bridge module. And this is that same case. And what I'm going to show in this video is how you could now use this to make a set of snap on teeth. Now, the reason you might do this is, you know, if your patient needs a uh, quick and dirty set of teeth that they could maybe put on for a wedding, or I call them church teeth, just something temporary, not intended for function, just for uh, using in a pinch. Or um, the other option is uh, if you wanted to do a aesthetic try-in on a patient, you know, one way is to do what I showed last video, design your wax up, print that, make a putty transfer on it, transfer that into the mouth, and you'll use probably $30 or $40 worth of Visacryl in the process. And that's all great. That's probably the best way of doing this. But if it's just for a try-in and your patient just wants to maybe see what it would look like and you're trying to minimize material use, overhead, and chair time, a nice option is to be able to turn these into some teeth that you can just pop on and off very quickly. They can take them home with them. Uh, it's going to probably use less than a dollar's worth of resin. So this is a useful technique to be able to do sometimes. And so the first step that we're going to need to do is generate a path of draw on this. Now, you can imagine that if right now I just simply did a Boolean subtraction of this model from all of these teeth, that would leave me the preps within the, uh, the bridge, but they're not going to have a path of draw. And so it's unlikely you would ever get this in with that dropping into all the undercuts and you'd spend a lot of time adjusting. So we don't want to do that. Rather, what we want to do is generate a path of draw. Now, Blue Sky Plan in both the Denture module and in the Crown and Bridge module has the ability to do that. Um, it's a bit of hack of the it's a bit of a hack of the software. We're just going to trick it into thinking that we're starting to make a conventional crown. So go into your Crown and Bridge mode, um, go to the Restoration Design panel, and tell it we're going to make a conventional crown on the maxilla, and we're going to use the green model. That's our upper working model. Pick any tooth, it doesn't matter which, you don't need an antagonist. And when you push start, the first step that it's going to do is ask you to identify a path of insertion. Okay, so let's do that. We would want this uh, whole thing to come in from the front. And we're going to go excessively from the front because we really, really want to minimize any of this brown undercut area on the teeth themselves and in particular at the gingival margin. You want to minimize that as much as possible because if there's a really significant undercut, what will happen is that when you subtract this away eventually, uh, it might eat away a good portion of your, your facial uh, of the tooth there at the margin. We don't want that since we're doing this for aesthetic purposes. So if we have some lingual undercuts and it eats it away, no one sees that. That doesn't matter. So what I want to do is just set it coming from the anterior, kind of like this, and coming straight up and down like so and then click next oh one more thing um undercuts you can allow up to a certain degree of undercuts so you might get away with it and actually make it kind of pop in if you did say a 0.1 or a 0.05 undercut but if you want to be safe since these are really really thin and you know could potentially break going in if you have to engage an undercut let's take that down to zero telling it that we don't want to allow any undercut whatsoever so click next and keep an eye on this brown area right here. Uh, you can see now that those brown areas have been blocked out. The brown area that was right here, right here, the one that we had there. All of those undercuts have been blocked out now. And that's what we want, is we wanted to do this model so that we can now subtract this from the bridge and generate a path of draw. So let's first of all go ahead and export this model. We're going to call this... Uh, path of draw and the only thing that we want to export here is this maxillary undercut model okay right here so export this let's call this path of draw model so we've got one STL of that now the other thing that we want to export is all of those teeth so export data this time we only want the teeth we don't want any of these models so turn all of them off and turn all of your teeth on. We'll export those all together, which is going to make a single STL out of all of those teeth. Now with that done, let's go ahead and open that in Mesh Mixer. So I'm gonna open my path of draw model. 
and here you see this. Now, this is going to have to be a solid because remember, we're going to end up doing a Boolean subtraction of this model with the path of draw built in from your bridge. And so we need to close this. Otherwise, this is not even a three dimensional object that you can subtract. So quickest and easiest way to do this when you've got a just a single opening like that is just a plane cut across it. So if I go to edit and plane cut, take it right across the top there. And as you see, that closes that model in. If there's good integrity and solid boundaries all across where you're making the cut, it will turn that into a uh, solid model. Okay, so now this is a three-dimensional object we can subtract. I'm going to now go and import all of our teeth. Ah, I just clicked the wrong file. All right, let's hide that. That was a mistake. And now import the teeth, which is the right file. And here we go. Now, let's look at this real quick. This is the bridge. Obviously, it's just Pontic shapes on the underside. There's no holes or anything in these. And this is somewhat of a complex mesh, okay? It's full quality, and, you know, we, we checked on all those individual tooth STLs. Um, right now, you would have virtually no contacts. These would be very um, flimsy and prone to breaking right there. So we want to make sure that this is not a complex mesh, first of all, because complex meshes do not do subtractions and unions well. And what I mean by a complex mesh is while this is a single STL, it's composed of many individual face groups, okay? And when you have a single STL composed of a bunch of face groups, they tend not to subtract well. So instead, what I'm going to do with all these teeth turned on is go to edit and say make solid. When you say make solid, um, it's going to degrade the mesh somewhat, but it turns this all into a single object as it's bridging them together, making it into that solid. Okay, now this is a little excessive. This would not look too aesthetic if we did this. Um, so one of the ways we can improve that is we could go to either accurate or sharp edge preservation. And let's take the solid accuracy up somewhat and update. Okay, that looks much better. We've still got a nice bridging across here. So you've got good contacts that are going to be holding this thing together. Um, won't be so flimsy and prone to breaking at a contact, but you've also preserved the shape more. And I'm going to accept this. And now you notice that if I double click on that one tooth, it selects the whole thing because now this is one continuous mesh. All right. Now this will subtract much more easily. So now with that done, I'm going to turn back on the path of draw model, which is also solid. And what I want to do is subtract this path of draw model from this. Now there's one remaining thing that I would suggest you do. Um, if you were going to use this in the fashion where let's say that you, you just want to have some shell temps ready for uh, after you've prepped the teeth, then I would stop right here and I would subtract this from this. However, if you're going to have to go on over existing teeth, they've not been prepped or anything, if you've got no offset uh, space between these two, it's going to be very difficult uh, to get those on, and chances are it will not seat completely. Just like with the surgical guide, in order to have that nice uh, tight fit but go on passively, you're going to have to create a little bit of offset spacer, or think of it like cement spacer, between your bridge and the teeth that they're going onto. And we don't have that currently, all right? So we need to make it. And the way I'm going to make it is that I'm going to select this whole model. So double click on it with your select tool and I'm going to offset it, all right? Okay, as you see, this has now been offset by uh, whatever distance you last used. I want this offset to only be about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something in that realm so that it'll be tight, but able to go on passively. So I'm gonna change this to 0.1, and if you just click on the screen, it's going to go back and reconfigure it again. Okay, here's our 0.1 offset. Now that took a little bit, which I've time-lapsed. Um, you could speed that up by perhaps not offsetting the entire surface, but maybe just offsetting the area that's gonna be in contact with your wax up. Um, that's just up to you. I'm going to accept this, and so this is the model that we actually want to subtract. Now, let's look really closely down here at this. You can see that that has been more or less expanded in all directions 
uh, by 0.1. It's important that you have your, your offset type as normal. Uh, that's going to offset it uniformly outward in every direction, okay? Now, this is still selected all, and I want to deselect it and get rid of this. So, uh, if you want to flip-flop what's selected versus what is not, go to Modify, Invert, and that will deselect the outer surface, the offset surface, and select all the other. Let's delete that other. Uh, once again, that takes me back to this um, you know, mesh that's not been entirely closed. I can plain cut that again, edit, plain cut. I didn't, the reason it's not catching it is because of that. So let's grab a plain cut from a different angle. There we go. And now because there's continuous boundary and there's not an open part to that mesh, you see it plain cuts it and uh, gets rid of um, all that open surface. All right, so here is our 0.1 offset and path of draw generated model. Now turn back on your solid teeth. And here's what I was meaning earlier. Um, you know, because we've offset that and my margins were so thin, I'm gonna end up with some tiny little holes here. Uh, I could improve that if I want to make sure that this is not going to um, end up with those holes. Right now, I could come in and use my brushes, and I could use the inflate tool. So let's inflate, and I'm going to use, I don't want to create a big bubble on the surface, so I'm going to use a pretty large spot size and just a couple single clicks. Just that one click inflated it enough that it's going to go back and now uh, cover over where that's shining through. And that once again, single click, boom, done. And let's make sure there's not any others here. Everything else is looking good. So now we're ready to do the Boolean subtraction. All right, so with this model selected, hold down control, select your other model, the, the actual arch that's been, uh, had a path of draw and an offset to it, and now push Boolean difference. And there you have it. This is your snap-on teeth. So let's accept that. All right, I obviously don't need this little floating piece, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And this is now ready for printing, uh, assuming it's a watertight mesh, but I'm guessing it's not because of those little red dots. So let's run an analysis on it first. Inspector, it identifies the two little areas that have errors in the mesh and repair those. So now this is watertight, ready for printing, and I can export this. So we'll call this snap on teeth. Save it. And now you're ready to go to your printer and to import this into the printer for printing. And I would use, uh, you know, your crown and bridge resin for this. Uh, pretty much the only crown and bridge resin I'm using these days much anymore is the crown and bridge MFH in the bleach shade. And so let's go to snap on teeth and let's choose that model. You obviously don't want to build supports down into the internal of this. That'd be really difficult to remove. And so we're just going to say fix. It's telling us that it's non-manifold. Um, for some reason, this, the new Rayware software sometimes find holes that uh, even like MeshMixer didn't seem to think there was a problem on, but no big deal. You can just let the software fix it. And so now it's fixed that. Um, here is our model repaired, ready for the Sprint Ray printer, but we've got to support it. So it tells you there's overhanging uh, un under supported areas. So I'm going to fix those again. Just the click of a button in the new Rayware software. And now we're ready to print. Okay, so choose your material. I just happen to have clear, and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So since I've got clear loaded, I'm gonna go clear loaded. I can't talk today, sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just print in clear for demonstration and you can see this is going to take 35 minutes so very efficient and minimal use of material 12 milliliters versus your average model is going to be a lot more than that plus your pbs putty 
plus your tray, plus your bisacryl, which is the biggest expense. Um, with this, I could do the math on it, but this is going to be a minimal amount of material. So I can go ahead now, connect to my printer, and go ahead and print this. And that is basically the end of the process. Print this in Crown and Bridge resin, and now you have some snap-on church teeth. Uh, they're prone to breaking, so cost so minimal. Just make your patient a bunch of them, or um, you know, give them a set to take home and show their their spouse if they're thinking about a full mouth rehab. Uh, just a lot of potential applications for this.